Hey y'all, it's Sarah. I got asked in the Peppermint Cactus Facebook group if I had any easy ideas about bows. So I decided I would show you a cheat that I use. Um, this works for me. There's a lot of reasons why I feel like it works for me. I don't know. Um, I know a lot of people just use Chanel stems and make their bows. I don't have a lot of luck with that. I don't end up with great bows. So I'm gonna show you how I make my bows. We're going to be able to make some with some scraps and some bows, some ribbons that I have here. Um, so most of these are either, this was Christmas clearance from last year. Um, this is just Dollar Tree. This one is also Dollar Tree. They have these out right now and I wanted to point something out. So the, the fall color packaging, the yellow one has this version which has a matte um stitched edging the halloween version looks just like this except for one detail this down the side is metallic so if you hadn't caught that pay attention to that because i grabbed a couple of each color and did not realize it, that they had different edging but they do um, so I've got a couple pieces that we'll be able to use with this that normally you wouldn't get to really be able to build a ribbon that way. I'm going to start out with some of this burlap one. And you can make it whatever size you want to. I'm just kind of showing you the method and you adjust it to however you want it to be. Now, normally you would probably want to start all the way to your edge there. However, because this method works so tightly, I'm not even going to waste that extra two or three inches of ribbon. And I'm going to go in almost in the middle here. And let's see how much I can loop over here. Hoping we'll get right back to this middle. No, but let me adjust it a little bit and let's see if I can. These are just scraps I had from other things. But the cool thing about using this method is it's really going to hold these together well. So that gives me... A couple of loops and just to keep that from going crazy on me until I get everything cut I'm just going to use one of these little Dollar Tree clamps and hold that in the middle and I'm going to pull off a little more of this ribbon just to give me another loop or two and I can still start there in that middle ish a little further over than middle. So I think this ends up giving me about four loops, it looks like. And I'm hoping those line up well since I did kind of patch those together. And I wanted to show you this way with some scraps so you could see how well this method works. Here's some more scraps. I'm probably going to use that little bit just to throw that color in there some. I'm going to bring in my buffalo check with a little more scraps here. And honestly, I'm just going to go a hair smaller than this. Sorry, it keeps getting hung on the edge of my desk here. So I get two loops out of that. And I'm going to bring in a little bit more. 
I like at least three. And I'm just going to add this into my little stack here. This is helping me save even just one inch here, one inch there. Let's see, where's my other scraps? We'll throw this little guy in here. Let me pull the tape off. Make sure I cross that, yep. And then I have all of this, and I may not even need all of this. Well, there we go. I get three loops out of this, so I'm good there. Okay, a couple more things. I'm going to go ahead and add a chenille stem. The thing that I'm doing different, though, is I went ahead and I cut, I had these scraps. I'm going to use these as my tails, so I'm going to put these at the bottom. Of my stack here. And I'm just going to kind of go ahead and aim those down a little bit before I go to do this part. So I have a pretty strong, hefty zip tie. Um, these are the larger Dollar Tree size. I'm going to take my chenille stem. I'm going to put it at the very bottom of this stack. Now, these are really wide ribbons. Ordinarily, most people, when they're using wide ribbons, um, they tend to want to notch them or what have you so that you can really maneuver those around and get your loops angled. However, because the zip tie scrunches this fabric up, holds it so tight, and I am really tightening this thing down with everything I've got. So, you can see my chenille stem is in there. Real quick, I want to show you a kind of a little tip on this. So, you can use anything to cut your zip tie. But, I want to show you that nail clippers gets right in there snug. And, you don't have that sharpness that's left from um, using scissors or something else. So, that right there is really smooth now. Okay. So, my next step after this is just coming in, and I can pull and pull and pull on these now, and I miscounted my loops, and that's okay, but I can pull all I want, even with those only halfway through that middle. And it's going to hold those so securely. I can't get that tight enough doing a chenille stem that way or florist wire or any of that. I can never get it tight enough. So doing it this way, I can come back in. I can really, really pull on these and get them right where I want them. And you can see that this was mostly made out of scraps that were off of other things. And yet wonderfully held together. I am really pulling on these and it's not pulling any of those shorter scrap pieces out of there. I can really adjust this. This is going to hold up outside. And assuming your ribbon can hold up outside, this is going to hold up to anything the outdoors is going to throw at it and then you just go around and kind of fluff your little loops 
and get those styled however you want them, whichever direction you want them. So when I get ready to hang this, I can always do it this way. You can hot glue it down. You didn't have to add the chenille stem if you didn't want to. You could hot glue it in place. And there you go. You just keep playing with it until you have it wherever you kind of want it. And it is not coming apart on you. I've got this little piece sticking out here. I'm going to go ahead and dovetail it. I've already dovetailed those. But I want to give you a quick tip on your dovetailing that I've noticed. Is when you go to cut those, when you fold it in half and go to cut those, Start from that edge up to your fold and you get a much cleaner cut than if you try starting at your fold. It just goes a lot easier. So that was my little quick tip on that. And it's all finished. The only thing I would have to do now is bring in whatever it was that I wanted to attach it to. Come in with my little stem here. Wrap it around. Twist it. I've got a cute little bow. This pumpkin tutorial is up also, guys. This palette pumpkin tutorial. And then there you go. If I want to remove that, I... Totally can remove it and reuse it any way that I want to. And you have a nice complete bow. I hope that helps you out if you're struggling with some bow making. This is just my little country girl cheat there using the zip ties over floral wires and um, chenille stems. You can still always use them to connect to whatever you're wanting to connect to, but for me this is just a much better way i don't have to worry about pulling it loose the cool thing is is that you saw that i had scraps left from other bows i did not have to notch into those so i could reuse them in any way i wanted to all i have to do is snip that zip tie loose and all of these ribbons are then back loose again and i can use them however i want to so that's the really cool thing about that, not having to notch any of your wider style ribbons. Um, if you have any other questions on that, just be sure to ask in the Peppermint Cactus group. I hope that helps a lot. I think it's a pretty easy cheat to do it and you can stack about as many ribbon options as you can fit, assuming that you've got some zip ties that are going to go around it. So, um, I am going to get back to crafting. I just wanted to pop in and do that. And now I'm going to start decorating some of these pumpkins. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.